Hi guys, welcome to the Cisco Design channel. My name is Joey and in today's episode of Two Minute Tech, we are going to be discussing the Internet of Behaviors. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button below. So today, we are going to be talking about one of the top nine tech trends predicted by Gartner in 2021, known as the Internet of Behaviors. Right, so personally, I don't really know much about this topic. I only know that it's an extension beyond the Internet of Things. So I'm going to bring you along as I hijack a meeting between digital marketing experts to find out what they think. So let's go. Hey, Tim, that was a great catch up. Wait, wait, wait. Before you guys go, I have a challenge for you today. What is this? Is this the YouTube thing again? Yeah, the one that you asked me to film. Oh, that one. All right, we're, we're about to finish the meeting anyways. Uh, Tim's all yours. All okay, right. so Tim, as the digital marketing expert, we have a challenge for you today. So we need you to explain the concept of Internet of Behaviors in under two minutes before this hourglass runs out. I'd love to. Challenge accepted, guys. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. All right, so to explain the Internet of Behaviour, I first need to take a step back and explain IoT, or the Internet of Things. So that sounds fancy, however, it's just a name for the world's physical devices that are connected to the Internet. Think smartphones, smartwatches, smart TVs, laptop printers, thermostats, refrigerators, cars, wearables, in-home assistants, and even smart socks. All these objects are embedded with smart stuff, like sensors, software, and technology that's designed to connect and exchange data. Interestingly, Gartner, who knows everything, predicted this year would see 25 billion IoT devices in play, meaning these devices now outnumber us three to one, which is terrifying stuff. The purpose of the Internet of Behaviour, however, is to capture, analyse and understand all of this data gathered from social media, geolocation, credit card transactions and food preferences, and data which gives insight into how we work, shop and eat, who we interact with and where we travel to. All of this information concerning virtually every facet of our lives can be gathered with the aim of improving efficiency and quality across a wide variety of objectives. That is so cool. So to give an example, do you mean that even things like my driving patterns, how fast I accelerate can be tracked for the insurance company to give me some sort of like credit score and then they can look at this right, and gauge how much they want to charge me for my insurance premium? Internet of Behaviour has really added this new dimension to consumer data profiling. So rather than operating just on personal or cookie data, the behavioural data provides a view of consumers' lifestyles. So we're adding a whole slew of new touch points as they go about their personal and professional lives, which in turn will aid companies in making more informed and strategic business decisions. So some examples that come to mind would be personalising your marketing tactics. Uh, you could tailor your products and services based on this, or even recraft the user experience on your website using these insights. So uh, that being said, do keep in mind there's issues which do present some risk here to businesses. So the first I would mention is privacy. So any time data is gathered at scale, there are concerns as to how it was gathered. So were users properly informed? And similarly, with how the data is used. So have they given proper consent? The second thing I would focus on is cybersecurity. So there's a risk of a data breach whenever data is gathered and potentially sensitive consumer behavior patterns being exposed to criminals. Um, and then you've got things to consider like phishing attacks you need to protect against. Um, third and final is ethics. So as, um, as people with behavioral science knowledge could potentially use this information to manipulate behaviors, we really need to be mindful of that as, as we go forward in the field of Internet of Behaviours. Yeah, I think you brought up a great point and that is one of the things that most people are concerned about, right? Privacy. So do you think that IOB is then a bad thing? The application of the Internet of Behaviours is really meant to improve human behaviour. So it's intended to give better outcomes to the consumer themselves. Um, I would say if you're a business exploring this currently, I think when designing around the Internet of Behaviour, you need to think about a fair value exchange. So going back to my example of the smart sock, it wasn't designed necessarily to harvest consumer behavioural data to kind of fine tune that marketing and sell more socks. It was actually designed with consumers' interest front and centre. So it captures biometric data like footfall pressure and cadence. And, and this is designed to improve the owner's performance and reduce their injury. So 
the aggregate of this data is then used to provide both improvements to the uh, the existing products and also to create new products. And, and this is the thing that really makes consumers want to buy more stuff. This is the virtue of circle that gets to the heart of what good IOB can potentially look like. That was really insightful. Thanks, Tim, for helping us to shed some light on the Internet of Behaviours. We'll see you again soon. Bye! So, what do you think? Is IOB necessarily a good or bad thing? Tell us in the comments down below. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a huge thumbs up. We'll see you again. Bye!